Hello guys, welcome back. I hope you are doing fine. By now, I hope you have already watched the first OpenAI Developer Day keynote. If not, I highly recommend you to watch this keynote. And also there is a blog post from OpenAI about the new models and developer products announced at Dev Day. So there is a blog post about it. But the main focus here is that there is the GPT-4 Torvo with 128K context window and lower prices. The new assistant API, which I'm going to explain you in this video. And there is this GPT-4 Torvo with Vision also and Dalle 3 API and many more. Just go through this blog post and the video. It will, it has some good contents there. What I was doing now is I was just following the documentation provided by OpenAI. And I was just trying this in my own notebook here. And then when I was trying this, there was a tweet from Llama Index. I have created many videos about Llama Index, the way to connect LLMs to your data. What they have explained here is we are launching a brand new agent powered by the OpenAI Assistant API. I was exploring the Assistant API and then uh, there was this tweet. So what I decided to do is go with the documentation that they have provided. So now this is the new notebook where I will be explaining you uh, different things provided by Llama Index exploring the OpenAI Assistant agent. What we will be doing in this video, this video will be in two parts. First, I will explain you how to uh, how to create the OpenAI Assistant agent. Let's say there are three different things here. First, we will create a simple agent. No external tools will be used here. The second one, we will be using the Assistant with Query Engine tools, meaning that there are some engine tools from Lama Index. So we will be using those index uh, engine. We will be using those query engine tools in order to uh, query the data. And at last, we will be using the assistant with the built-in retrieval because this OpenAI Assistant API has its inbuilt retrieval API also. And at the later half of this video, I will show how this will be reflected in their website here. And I will also show you how you can create your own assistant without writing a single line of code. Let's get started. Okay, here I am on the Google Colab notebook. What we need to do first is install some necessary packages. Here I'm installing Llama Index and OpenAI as well as the watermark. Watermark is there just to show what versions I'm using and what is the different OS, release, machine, and different things. You know that what devices I'm using and what packages I'm using. Once you run this, we need to have the API key. That's what we are going to do in the first part of this video. Just go to this link and get the API keys and just run this code. It will ask you to provide the API key and then that's it. So first, let's create a simple agent. Simple agent means that there is uh, no external tools but we have this code interpreter inbuilt uh, inside this API in the simple agent, right? So here from llamaindex.agent, we are importing this OpenAI Assistant agent. So you might be wondering, oh, what is this OpenAI Assistant agent? In notebooks, what you can do is just first import this particular wrapper and then just run two question marks behind it. It will show us the documentation or let's say the code of that particular class. So here it says class OpenAI Assistant Agent and it says the wrapper around OpenAI Assistant API. So there is the link also being provided. You can go through that. And there is all the functions inside that class. This is using the GPT, the newest GPT, which uh, has access to this agent. If we just go here and short maybe let's say GPT, you can see here that the model is GPT-4 11.6 meaning the November 6 preview model that we will be using. This is how you can actually explore this uh, class also in the notebooks. So once that is done, what we can do is create an object now, agent, and there is this OpenAI Assistant agent from new, and we pass uh, the different arguments here. As you can see, I said the name, it should be anything you want. It's just a math tutor. You pass the instructions into it, and then there is the OpenAI tools, meaning that we need to pass what tools we want to use, right? So by default, it comes the code interpreter. And it says, I, this is just the instruction prefix. Okay, please address the user as well. So you can just give whatever you want here. After that, what you can do is just call that call that agent, right? So here it says agent.chat and you just provided the question here. Okay, I need to solve the equation 3x plus 11 equals to 14. Can you help me? So that is the question, right? And then the response, it will be okay. This is what it provides the responses. 
and the answer is okay x equals to 1 so that is how it provides the answer i will show you how it is reflected in the open ai's website later but this is how it works this is the simple agent that we can build easily with llama index so yeah what next is now we will be creating the assistant with query engine tools what llama index provides for us if you have watched my previous videos it will be similar to what i have done before but now with the new uh, assistant agent right first we need to load the data so this is just the normal import x that we do and then here this is also the normal things where we want to store this uh, persistent storage and then what we do is uh, we created a folder called data 10k and then we download these particular things as you can see here this is 10k uber 2021 and lift 2021 uh, pdfs and then we store that into this particular folder if you go here you will see the data folder here being created inside data folder there is 10k inside there we have two different pdf files so now the data is provided for us what we can do now is we need to of course install pypdf there are many packages but we will be using the pypdf here and what we are doing here is if not index loaded we do okay load the data that's what we need to do right so here is the leaf docs and this is the simple directory reader from llama index and we can pass the of that particular file pdf so this is what we do for both uber and lift and this we build the index out of it then we persist the index and when you run this piece of code then what it will do is create this dot storage and inside this here we have the lift as well as the uber index being created once we have the index what we can do now is query into it right so how to do that let me close this here here we will be creating the engine first in order to query that right so here is the lift engine lift index dot as query engine and we say similarity top k equals to three meaning that provide me the top three similarity context right that we get from that particular query engine so we have this both of this whichever you want to run and now here is the lift engine just to show you that it is the llama index or query engine retriever query engine that's what is being created here so yeah now we need to create the tools because what we can do with the query engine tools is there is this query engine tool and inside that we can pass different uh, query engine so here we say okay this is the query engine and metadata this is the tool metadata we give the name okay lift uh, underscore 10k and there is a description similar to that we provide this also for the uber one so here is the lift and here is the uber and then okay now we have the query engine tools being created i hope if you have followed previous uh, llama index videos it's quite clear how we do the things in the rag implementation and now once this is done what we can do now is use these tools inside the open ai assistant agent that we created before so here this is the agent again we have this from new what we did before and we just can give whatever you want to give SEC analyst instruction okay you are an QA assistant designed to analyze FSEC filings whatever you want to provide and here as you can see here in the tools we have this query engine tools but before if you see when we create the simple one what we have passed here is open AI tools and we have passed the code interpreter but here what we are doing is we are creating our own engine tools query engine tools and we are passing that as a tool and then we have this instructions prefix so okay please address the user as to version and var was true and run retrieve sleep time one this is just a simple agent we create after that is just a similar what we did before so agent.chat meaning that now we can have the conversation with that particular pdf which was being stored in this index what we will get the answer okay what was leaps revenue growth in 2021 so it says here there is a function calling happening behind the scene and then okay function calling lift underscore 10k with arguments input what was leaps revenue growth in 2021 and we get the answer okay leaps revenue growth in 2021 was uh, 36 percent that's what we get the answer if you want to go in depth there is the response response and there are other different methods also response source nodes uh, what does this do is we have retrieved three diff three similarity things it provides us okay from where this particular information is being taken from. so yeah this is how you can do and that is the part from the llama index but now we can do the same thing 
uh, without using the Llama index tools. Let's go through the assistant with built-in retrieval. And what we did until now is use the Llama index in order to retrieve the information out of that uh, particular PDF. What we did process, first we have the PDF, we store that somewhere. And then what we did is we do the embedding part. We store that into somewhere, meaning that we created the index and we ask the question and get the answer out of it. But here, with the help of this new uh, OpenAI retrieval tool, we can do that directly with the file uh, that we uploaded. So there are different ways how you can do that. But here, uh, what we can do is example here. This is the same what we did. The name is also, you can give the same instructions. And here you can see here open AI tools before we use the code interpreter. In the second part, we use the tools that we created. And here on the third part, we are using the tool retrieval. And then we set the instructions. Okay, this is who you can just provide whatever you want. And there is the files now you can provide. You can provide the file or the file IDs also. You can go through this link I have provided, which takes you to the open AI documentation. And then, okay, what was equals to true? So now with just this, what we can do is we can have a retrieval engine being created by default from the OpenAI's agent. So yeah, here we have the response agent.chat, the same question we asked. And let's see the answer. The answer that we get from the Llama Index retrieval engine was, okay, Leap's uh, revenue growth in 2021 was 36%. That's the answer we get here, right? So now with the OpenAI's retrieval, we get, okay, Leap's revenue increase 843.6 million or 36% in 2021 as compared to the previous years. This growth was driven primarily by a significant increase in the number of this, 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 this. It provided a little bit more answer, but as you can see, the main answer here is 36%. So both of these graphs the same answer, but you can see that with Llama Index also it is possible, but we went a little bit, a uh, little bit more code there, but with the OpenAI's API, we just use this piece of code and we get the answer. Now you might be thinking, is Llama Index necessary? Yes, it is necessary because they say that this is just for the open AI, right? There are many other models also there and it depends how you want to do the retrieval part. Of course, here it provides the same answer. Functionality wise, it's very similar to what open AI function calling, but it handles the loop execution under the hood adds in the code interpreter plus retrieval. So what I would suggest you to do is just go around with both of these and use the one that best fits your use case. So, okay, that's all from the coding part. Now let's go to the second part. How this is now reflected in the OpenAI's website, right? So this is the website that I showed you before. So you need to create an account first. And once you create the account and once you are logged in, the UI is now changed since yesterday when there was this keynote. And now we have this playground and the assistance. And other things, API keys that we get from here, there is files now and other things. But if I go to the playground, okay, this is the assistant, but let me first go to the chat. So this was the interface that we used to show, we used to see before, right? What we could see, do here is we can choose different models from here and you can play around with these different parameters here and you can add the system prompt here. You can add the user and start asking the questions here. That is what it used to be or it is still in the chat mode. But now there is another thing called assistance. The thing that we just did in the Google Colab is now here in the assistance. If I go to the assistance, as you can see here, I have done nothing here, but it is reflecting some of the things here. It even shows me the file and it says, okay, retrieval is already turned on. And then there is this SEC analyst and instructions is you are a QA assistant designed to analyze the SEC filings. So where does this come from? If I now go to the uh, Google Colab notebook, as you can see here, so this is the thing that it's automatically taken there. So we have uploaded the data leaf 2021 PDF and we are saying that you are a QA assistant designed to analyze SEC filings. And this is reflected in the playground. What we can do now is just ask the questions. Let me ask the same question that I asked here just to see what will be the answer. I will go here. I will just go to this thread. I will do control V, add and run. Now I have done nothing but what I wrote in the Google Colab notebook 
is now reflected in this playground and there is the file already being uploaded and all the things are automatically taken from here. Hey, as you can see here, the answer is the same here. So this growth was driven by this, this, this. You can see that when you write the code, it is already reflected in the uh, playground itself. For this, if you go to this assistant, you can see that there are three different assistants. I run three different code in Google Colab. One was with just the default one. The second one was with the different functions from uh, this particular Lama index. And if I again go to assistant, okay, this is the math tutor. As you can see here, this is just the normal code interpreter. Okay, these are all being shown here when we write the code in the Google Colab or somewhere where you want to write the code. But how to create it by yourself, right? Now let's do that one. I go to the assistant. I go to this create icon here. And from here, I can give the name. Let's say just the test, test GPT, something like that. And you can just leave as it is now. You are a helpful assistant. And you can choose the model from here, whatever you want to do. But remember that, let me bring it here. Depending upon the model that you choose here, let's say if you choose GPT-4, then you can do this code interpreter on. But as you can see here, when I try to do this retrieval, it's not supported because that is just for this GPT-4 1106 preview. If you go with the other things, let me see GPT-3.5 Turbo, you cannot do this. So in order to use the retrieval, you need to go with this GPT-4 1106 preview. Once this is done, you can just upload the file if you want, or let's say that you just save it. And now you have this test GPT. Go here, you can go to this test. It will open in the new UI here. And what you can do is now have the conversation here. What is, let's say five times six or five times five. Let me ask the question what happens because we have this code interpreter here. What it needs to do is use the code interpreter. But as you can see, this is just a simple math. It just says, okay, five times five, it just 25. It knows the question that it needs to do. But what if I ask the question, let me go to the first question here, a little bit harder question where it needs to go through the code interpreter. Let me see, I ask this same question here. Control C, I go to the, where is it? Here, let me ask this question here and add enroll. Now it needs to go through the code interpreter. As you can see here, there is this code interpreter being run. If you want to see what it provides, so here is the answer to solve this, 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 it needs to go through different steps. But if you click on top of this, it will show you the code also. Here is from this, it imports this and all the different things. This is how you can use the code interpreter. And if you want to, as I said you before also, if you want to use the retrieval also, just do the retrieval part to go on and upload the files and then you can have conversation. Let's say that we want to upload a file. I will go with this one. Let me open this. It takes some time to open, although I haven't written here anything. So, okay, it's uploaded. Let me save this one. This is just the GPT-4 technical report. It says the US assistant has been up updated. Now, what I can say here is, okay, who are the authors of the paper? And then I can just add and draw. It will take the information from this particular GPT for all technical paper. So as you can see here, it says it seems that, okay, something here, and then it provides the answer for us here. That's how you can, you can have a retrieval engine being created without writing a code, right? Here we just click here and there and we created one with the code interpreter and then next one, the retrieval query engine. So yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new. Now you know how to use the new assistant API via the code and also how you can run this in the playground itself. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.